Hey everyone, so as you may or may not know, I've been bullet journaling since 2018, so this is actually my third year of doing this, and I know it can be very overwhelming at first with all those supplies and you don't really know where to start, <laughs> so I thought I would make a video on like my bullet journal essentials or I guess more um, my favorite supplies that I like using. And I got this idea from a comment on my April plan with me video. So thank you again to Sparkle Journaling, that was really sweet. And yeah, I'm just gonna get into it. So I just wanted to show you, you really don't need a lot of supplies to create a spread. As you can see for my 2020 setup, I actually didn't really use a lot of supplies. So I only used a couple of pens and some paper and that was pretty much it. So I just wanted to show you that you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff. It's really not necessary. But yeah, I'm just gonna get into my favorites now. So obviously you're gonna need a notebook of some sort. Now I've only used two brands so far and when I started bullet journaling I used the Leuchtturm 1917 and I really liked it to be honest. Um, I used it for two years and then I switched to the Arch and Olive bullet journal and I do already have a little bit of a review and kind of a comparison of the two on my channel. So go check that out, a link in the description and in the cards above. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about it. The biggest issue for me was just the paper because it was really thin and the Arch and Olive obviously has really, really thick paper. So I really like that. But yeah, if you're just starting out, I wouldn't really worry too much about it. It just kind of depends on what you want to fill it with. Now probably the biggest section of essentials uh, for me is my pens and markers and stuff like that. So first of all I do use the Tombow Dual Brush Pens, I know they can be kind of expensive but they do really work really well for me. Um, they have a brush tip on one end and a felt tip on the other and they come in a really really large uh, variety of colors. I would personally recommend buying them individually though, so that you don't have a bunch that you <laughs> never use, like me. And some other markers I really like using are the Zebra Mite Liners, and they have a chisel tip as well as a finer tip on the other side. Um, now these only come in packs as far as I know, but they're pretty small packs, I think only 5 per pack, so I think they're definitely worth it and they're not too expensive either. I also wanted to show you two alternatives that I have, uh, one of which is the Fiber Castell Pit Artist Pen. Now these also are a little bit expensive as far as I know, but they are very high quality. And then for a cheaper alternative, there is also the Stabilo, Stabilo? <laughs> um, 68, and they also have a bunch of colors. The tip is just a little thinner, so you don't really cover a lot of area with them. So yeah, as you can see here, I created some swatches of my most used colors and I just wrote the color code um, for each one or the name so you can see which one it is. And yeah, as you can see, I don't really have a lot of favorite colors. I just like sticking to the basics, like just having a nice yellow, a blue, a red, maybe a purple and like green and stuff like that. And then something more muted like um, the beige or the gray. So yeah, the Tombows definitely are my favorites, but it just kind of depends on what fits your style best and what you use them for. Now moving on to some other pens. This is um, probably my favorite and most used pen. This is the Pilot Juice Pen in 0.38 and this is what I use for writing in my bullet journal and sometimes also for lines and stuff like that. I just really love this pen <laughs> because it dries super quick and it doesn't smudge so yeah. If you have a favorite black pen definitely let me know and I'll try them out. Um, but yeah, and of course you've probably seen this one in all of my videos. <laughs> this is the Unibol Signal White Gel Pen in broad. So I have it in white and gold and also a copper one. I use the white and gold most. But yeah, they're just really great quality and they show up really, really nice on any sort of paper basically. Um, but yeah, I do have another white gel pen and this is the Pilot Choose Pen. Um, it's just a little bit thinner and not as opaque, so it's just an alternative if I run out of my favorites. Now for some fine liners, I have the Sakura Pigma Microns. Of course, these are pretty popular <laughs> and they are really are worth it, I gotta say. Um, they last really long and they're waterproof and don't smudge at all. And I use the 02, 03 and 05 the most. And yeah, they're just a great pen, honestly. 
And then for hand lettering, I really love using the Tambo Furunosuke. You've probably seen this one as well. <laughs> and this is the hard tip variety. They also have a soft tip, but I haven't really tried that out yet. And yeah, I wanted to include another alternative for fine liners, uh, which is the Edding 1800. And I have it in 0.1 and 0.3. I think they have a bunch of other thicknesses as well. And I would say they're actually pretty comparable to the Pigma Microns. Um, so yeah, here are again some swatches. As you can see, the gel pens really are very nice and metallic, which is why I love them so much. <laughs> and they also show up on black paper or any color of paper. And yeah, underneath we got the fine liners. Um, not much to say about those. All right, so moving on to some decoration stuff. I have a few washi tapes. I actually don't use them a lot and I don't have a lot of them. And I usually go for more simple designs. So I'm actually planning to maybe get some solid colored ones or maybe just like a simple pattern. And then below we have my favorite sticky notes, you've probably seen them as well. Um, and they're from Notebook Therapy, they're called the Dream Notes, I believe. And I haven't used all of them, but they're very pretty and I love that they're round, I don't know, it's just something different. Um, but yeah, the cloud one is definitely my favorite and I might get some other ones. <laughs> And yeah, apart from those, I really like using black or brown craft paper and it really doesn't matter what brand you use or whatever, I just picked up some random ones to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, but some other random essentials are obviously you're gonna need some scissors, um, I got these really pretty cool ones. And then I do have this really useful tool which is a corner rounder and it comes with three different sizes um, which is really useful. And you can just kind of round off edges like i don't know it's really useful <laughs> and yeah this glue roller is probably one of my most used tools and i'm so glad i found out about this um this one is just by tisa i think tomba makes one as well and it's actually refillable which is really great so you can just keep the case and buy refills and then i also have a little correction tape for like when i make a mistake which happens a lot now, if you've seen any of my videos, you probably know that I create a lot of illustrations and I just wanted to show you the paints I like to use. I have the Schmincke Horadam um, watercolor paint and then I also have the gouache type. And I recently got some acrylic paint from the same brand, uh, which I will probably use in future setups as well. And yeah, I also use this really battered old <laughs> palette. You could pretty much use any surface or like a plate or something. You just need something to mix your paints basically. And then I also have a bunch of random brushes. I don't really buy a specific brand to be honest. I just have some different sizes and styles and yep, that's basically it. <laughs> uh, lastly, for paper, I again have this really random paper from a local store which is pretty thick so it can handle watercolor it's not like super thick maybe around like 200 grams or 250 but it's good enough for watercolor to be honest and for my acrylic paint i got this one which is by hanemude and this paper is actually 360 grams uh, which is pretty thick and you do really need uh, really thick paper for acrylics. What I also like about this is that the paper is actually secured on all sides so it's like glued down so that it won't warp when you paint on it and you can remove it from this little corner up in the top left. So yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and yeah, I just wanted to show you again that you can really do a lot with just a few pens. Like with this uh, weekly spread, I literally used four pens <laughs> and that's it. So you really don't have to spend a lot of money if you're interested in starting a bullet journal. Definitely don't be afraid of it. Just get a couple of pens and try stuff out. And I hope this was helpful to any of you. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye! It's hard for me to say.